The legendary bout Bonds of Friendship is probably the hardest content the game has to offer. After clearing this 40 plus times, I couldn't find a way to cheese it, so we're just gonna have to get good. I'll be sharing all my tips and tricks I learned after all these attempts to make your clear as easy as possible. So with that out the way, let's get into this, yeah? For Materia, Cloud's gonna need Lightning and Wind as 5 of the 10 rounds have enemies weak to it. It'll be linked to Swift Cast so we could cast our Aga spells as fast as possible. First Strike so we have 1 ATB to start the fight. ATB Boost so we can make this 1 ATB into 2 ATB. Skill Master so we could get a free ATB every 3 unique actions. Magic Up for even more magic stat. Every round's a boss, meaning they hit really hard. I linked the wind to HP absorption so we could keep up the offense while being able to heal. Another wind linked to MP absorption so we have the MP to clear each fight. Fire and ice linked to elemental so we could cheese some attacks. I highly recommend a level 3 so you could heal off of these attacks. HP up so we have a bigger pool to survive attacks. Steadfast block so we gain ATB whenever we block, and we're gonna be blocking a lot. The best summon for this build is Phoenix. For weapons, I went with the Rune Blade. This is Cloud's best magic weapon, and the weapon skills are amazing. As for accessories, you'll want the Genji Glove as it'll triple our damage output. Nothing even comes close, so you better get it if you don't have it yet. As for shortcuts, I highly recommend you get Aroga and Counterstand somewhere comfy, as we'll be using those a lot. Now that you're prepared, let's go over to fight so we could breeze through them. You'll want to hold down R1 and press L1 when combat starts. Then swap to Zack and hold down the square button so he gap closers to Titan. At the same time, open the menu and use Prime Mode with Cloud. Continue to hold square so it lifts Zack into the air. Press square three times and hold square to descend. Dodge to the side. If it does stone, swap back to Cloud and counter fire as his left leg moves. If you see Twack, dodge to the side. Use Faith on Cloud. Disorder and will handle Stonaga the same way. You stop on Titan and build up ATB. Eroga, hold down square while in prime mode to build up your ATB the fastest. Another Eroga should break the Aegis. Focus Trust, Aurora, back to back Aroga to finish the fight. Some attacks you may have not seen in this kill are Mountain Buster, which is a 4 part attack. For those unfamiliar with Cloud, he'll counter back any physical attack while in Punisher mode or Prime mode. Just hold down your guard button and once you see or hear the counter animation go off, hold guard again. Sling, this is a grab that can easily be dodged by just walking away from him. He sometimes does a 3 part combo starting with his left hand, right and then a stomp. Guard the first two and counter fire the stomp. I don't know why the stomp counts as a range attack but we'll take it. Do not use ATB boost as this boss likes to attack right away. If you see Fullman, use counter fire as soon as you see the right claw go up. Use prime mode. Headlong charge is just like the name implies. Hold down guard in prime mode. Whenever he does this, swap to Zack to easily build up some ATB. If you see Vortex Sweep, guard the attack or dodge away as it's a circle cleave around its hitbox. Use Faith on Cloud. Aroga usually triggers Supercharge. This is a bunch of lightning strikes so just get away until it becomes pressured. When it starts descending, you stop. Build up ATB, then Aroga. Aurora followed by ATB boost into Aroga. We'll be starting off just like Titan. ATB boost, then swap to Zack and build up some ATB. At the same time, use Prime Mode with Cloud. Use Faith on Cloud when you get ATB.
When the flan spawns, use fire with cloud. Make sure Zack has 2 ATB and from here this fight is a joke, so I'll go over why this guy took the longest. Unlike other characters, Zack requires you to play him to deal efficient damage. Unfortunately, he can't set materia or accessories making it hard for him to out damage Cloud. If they have Zack in part 3, I hope the AI is programmed to build up his gauge, kinda like how you could play anyone else and then swap to red 13, and he has a good amount of vengeance gauge already available. Use Aurora on the bomb. A lack of a counterattack, range attack, or quick ATV generation makes him feel kinda meh. When the last mob spawns, use Fyra from Cloud. Have Zack cast Blazaga on Phoenix. Focus Thrust and build up some ATB. Blazaga. ATB boost, Aroga. Round 4 is what we call free low. Do not ATB boost. Swap to Punisher mode as it comes into melee range every time. Once you get 2 ATB, Prime mode. At the same time, you stop with Zack. Hold down your square button in Prime mode and Aroga when you get 2 ATB. When you get 1 ATB, Aurora. ATB boost, Aroga. Then finish it off with Fireaga. He does have other attacks in his move pool, but why go over them when he dies to this every single attempt? We won't be using ATB boost at the start as Kujata comes for us right away. Guard in Punisher mode like normal, while Zack uses haste on us. Pry mode and wait to see what it does. You want to get away from Ferocious Lion because if you get hit by all attacks, you get stunned. When you see its head moves to the side, guard. If you have ATB, counter stands to guard again when the first hit connects. Thunderous Stomp is a big AoE when it lands, so just walk away, then dodge when it lands. Once it lands, use Aroga. Tundaga when you have 2 ATB. Swap to Zack and build up some ATB. Faith when he has one. If he roars upwards, this means he'll charge to change element. ATB boost and Aroga. If done properly, it'll only change into one element. If you're lucky, it's fire or ice. You could build up ATB without having to guard any attack, as you'll just heal off of every single hit. If it's the electric version, however, you'll need to use Aroga twice to break it out ASAP. Fireaga or Blazaga, depending on the element, for some big damage. Then go back to Aroga and Sandaga. You stop when staggered and kill it with whatever. You want to ATB boost and use prime mode. Have Zack use haste on cloud. If it does fire Aga, then just build up some free ATB. 
Aroga when you have 2 ATB. Swap to Zac and get 2 ATB ASAP. If it does command, get behind it. Bravery when you get your first one. If you see the sword raise, then guard or dodge under him. Faith when Zack can. Grand Sword is a 3 part attack, so either guard back to back or dodge under him. Tundago when you have 2 ATB. When it does sharpen, swap to Zack and build up ATB if he doesn't have one, then use stop. Aroga and alternate with Tundaga until it's dead. Start off with ATB boost in prime mode. Have Zack use Faith on Cloud. If it does wave cannon, then counter fire when his arm hits the floor. Move over to one of the arms and get some ATB. Tracking beam can be counter fired once they start moving towards you. Tundara. If it teleports, do a dodge, press square, then hold it down to gap closer. Grand laser cannot be countered fire, so dodge it once its head starts moving up. Punitive spear is an annoying attack. If any arms are still up, then break it to cancel this attack. Aroga. If Zack has ATB, use Blizzara. Focus thrust and finish it off with a Tandaga. Some attacks we didn't see this kill are Rampant Wave. The ground will have glowing lines from Alexander. Get out of them or break an arm to stop the attack. Ur Tremor. This is a slam with both arms in front of Alexander, so stand to the side. You can actually counter fire the shockwaves from this attack. Sweep. This has a big hitbox, so dodge away twice. We're gonna want to ATB boost, prime mode, and have Zack use haste on cloud. Mind Flayer starts off by approaching us. If you see his right hand move up, it'll be a slow attack, so you could squeeze out an extra hit. Now if you see the left hand moving, this will be a fast attack, so never do the full combo in Prime Mode, or use Counter Stands to catch it. Rogo when you have 2 ATB and swap the Zack to generate some ATB. Bravery when you get your first one. When Mind Flayer disappears, go to the center to bait it, then go to the edge of the arena. Dodge and press square 3 times, then hold it to gap closer. Tundaga when you have 2 ATB. When it does telekinesis, swap the cloud and counter fire once the rock is almost consumed by the vortex. Use faith on cloud. Refresh Berserker, then Soldier's Honor. Focus Thrust and you stop when staggered. Build up 2 ATB and Infinity's End. Do it again, except this time you want to use Kirago with Zack. The last two fights are hard, so you want to go in topped up. Some attacks not seeing this killed are not named, but when Mind Flayer is channeling a purple attack, use Counter Fire when he swipes his hand. When you see tiny rocks being lifted, Counter Fire at the apex.
Do not use ATB boost. Instead, you want to go to Punisher mode and guard the two-part attack he always does. Use haste on Cloud. After the second hit connects, Prime mode. As soon as you see the ping from Flame Breath, counter fire. Thruster Spin cannot be guard by the normal method. Instead, use Counter Stance if you have ATB, otherwise dodge away twice. You want Cloud to be grabbed here. I know it may seem weird, but if we don't, then we won't get ATB to give him Bravery or Fade. When Bahamut drops Cloud, move away as he does an AoE Blast, which can damage Zack. When you get up, reapply Berserker. Tundara one wing and then Aurora the other. Aroga once we have two ATB. Once you see the pressure go away, use Soldier's Honor. Tundara and Aurora, the wings again. Swap to Zack and get his second ATB. Disorder and have Zack use Fire Aga. Aroga into ATB boost Tandaga. Aroga again. This time I didn't mean to get grabbed, so if it happens, just build up ATB with Zack. In the earlier phases, you could use an Aga to break the grip, but Fire Aga doesn't do it once we're this deep into the fight. Tundara Boat Wings Aroga If you see Whirlwind Slash, guard it. If you have ATB to spare, use Counter Stance. And as you're blocking the first hit, hold down guard again as it's a two-part attack. Some attacks not seeing this kill are Nova Bomb. Counter Fire once the ball starts approaching you. Homing Barrage. Counter Fire as the bullets drop down. Grim Upheaval. Dodge away as it's an AoE attack around its hitbox, then an uppercut. Laser Raise. Counter fire once Bahamut's head comes down. Gale Wind Slash is a dash, then stab, so either dodge to the side or guard. Soaring Slash. Guard or dodge as it's a quick attack. Time for the final round, but before we go over this, I highly recommend you pause your challenge and take a breather. This round can get you killed within seconds, and you're gonna be demoralized as you have to do this all over again. Hopefully you took a break, and you're ready to go. Do not use ATB boost, instead go to the left and use haste on cloud. You'll want to swap to punisher mode and guard as he almost always does soaring spear. Once you block it, use prime mode. If it does charge, then hold down guard and repeat as it's a 4 part attack. Once you get 2 ATB, use Aroga and swap to Zack to build up some ATB. If you see Helm Cleaver, dodge away twice. We do not want to get hit as this puts a nasty debuff on us, even if we guard it. Slefnir's Fur gives Odin a damage buff, but also lowers his defense and opens up the stagger gauge so we can fill it quicker. Go in for some hits and build up ATB. 
If Odin's spear moves or you hear Slefnir's nay, guard. If you try to run away like this, he'll punish you with his spear. Spear Rampage is a spin attack around his hitbox. It hits twice, so guard again after the first hit. If you have ATB to spear, then counter stands for some more damage. Unfortunately, Zack took the second hit. Tundaga then swapped to Zack for some ATB. Once you have some ATB, use Faith on Cloud. Aroga ATB boost into Tandaga. Swap back to Zack for some ATB. Lord of the Blade upgrades his sword and adds new attacks to his move pool. Bravery on Cloud. Spatial Distortion splits the arena into two. You want to be on the side that's clear. The wrong side visually looks different. Just like Helm Cleaver, you want to avoid Full Moon Assault at all costs. Aroga if you have the ATB for it. Lord of the Battlefield upgrades his spear and adds new attacks to his move pool. Charging Steed is just like Charge, so guard 4 times, but this time he'll throw his spear when he finishes, so keep your guard up. All Fodder's Fury is a 4 attack that is very fast. Unfortunately, I got caught. Kurago with Cloud and we'll be fine. If you have your Limit Break, do not use it! We have a specific spot, so do not throw away your run. Ring of Helheim is a big AoE around its hitbox, so just move away. Shimmering Blade is a quick cleave, so back away. Tandaga for some free damage. Temporal Imprisonment almost guarantees you lose the run as he'll stop Zack or Cloud for a good 10 seconds. The only way I found to avoid this attack is by using the Limit Break's invincibility frames to eat the hit, so use it now. Swap to Zack for some free ATB. Wolf Hunter is another attack we want to avoid at all costs. See how Zack's forearms have a purple ring around it? If Zack does an ATB command now, he'll immediately be counterattacked by Odin for over 2000 damage. ATB boost should be up now. Aroga and use Soldier's Honor. Since Zack has 2 ATB, I'm going to use Fyraga to trigger the counter. Well, we got really lucky as Slefnir's fur is one of the windows Odin doesn't counter back. Some attack not seeing this kill is Swift Punishment. He jumps up into the air and lands on you really quick, so guard. Illusory Blade is 2 quick slashes in an X. Dodge away from this as it's another attack we want to avoid at all costs. Tyrannical Onslaught is the base form of All Fodder's Fury. It's a single slash followed by two quick slashes back to back. Once he upgrades his spear, he does a spear attack that will also want to be avoided. I unfortunately lost the footage of me doing it. Hopefully you found this guide helpful, and if there's any unanswered questions, then ask down below. And if you haven't beaten Rulers of the Outer World yet, then consider checking out this video right here. Until the next video, I'll see ya.